So hello, it's Jimmy here again at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanics and we have this uh, VW T5 here behind me. It's got uh, an overboost issue where it's losing power uh, intermittently. Okay, so on this uh, T5 here, it's um, the codes have already been cleared before we've got here. Um, she's had it at a garage. Uh, they've replaced, I don't know why, they, but they've replaced, uh, she said, intercooler and they've replaced various hoses. I mean... PO234 code is usually something to do with the turbo, but we're going to have a look and see what's going on. So we're just looking into the engine here, and then let me see if I can get down the back. There we have the turbo, you can see that little rod there, the actuator rod. And here we have the vacuum lines for it. Okay, so what I've done here is just disconnected this vacuum line. This one runs down to the turbo actuator there, then to the rod there. So we're going to connect up a Mitty vac here this is the name and this is what the little tool looks like so we're going to connect that up and see if the actuator rod's moving so we've got that connected there and we have this set to vacuum now we're going to give it a few pumps let's have a look at the actuator rod first where are we we are just down there let's give it a few pumps Okay, so it's moving down and it's holding. Now we're going to release the pressure. Yep, so it seems to be working freely there. So now we've tested that end, we're going to test the uh, valve end here, the N75 valve. So we'll connect up our uh, MITI vac again to that. And I can already tell her that nobody's ever tested this yet because I don't know if you know, but when you when you're pulling these sort of things out after a few years, they they sort of make a seal, you know, the rubber seals to the to the little valve here, and it was quite hard to break the seal on it. So I know it hasn't been open in many years. So I've got that connected there. Started the engine up now, and we can see there we're getting. Oh, sorry, I'm pressing the uh, lever there. So we can see we're getting pressure there, so the N75 valve is working. So that's just connected on there and starting the van up. So the next step I'm going to do on this vehicle here is connect this smoke leak detector up. She's running there now and she's pumping some smoke out. So I'm going to connect that up to the intake system, see if we've got any boost leaks anywhere. So that's connected up. now. It's not likely we have a boost leak because boost leak usually calls under boost, not over boost, but uh, it's a good practice just to check it anyway. So I can see there on that little intercooler hose there, that's got some smoke coming out. You can see there is some oil around it as well, which is a sign it was leaking. So I'm going to get my fingers, just run them down along the underneath of that. And you can see there, there's definitely been leaking oil. So I've pulled out this pipe here and to me it just seemed like it was maybe sitting incorrectly, uh, just sitting you know, slightly offset a little bit, there was a little bit of a gap at one side. Um, but this pipe, it's not old but it doesn't look brand new to me. Um, so what I've done is I've just uh, greased it up, ready to go back in. I'm going to try and fit it back in, see if I can push it in a little bit more securely. Um, but yeah, from looking at this, it's I can't see where what pipes they've replaced. Um, apparently, she's had all the intercooler pipes replaced and the intercooler. But um, the only thing I can suggest is maybe that they were used when they replaced them. But you can see down there the um, the amount of oil that was coming out of this. You can just see there, like it's been it's been leaking for a while there. So I'm just going to see if I can get this maybe sealed up a little bit better and then do another smoke test. Okay, I've got that connected back up there, and I don't know if you can tell by just looking at that. Look how much better that pipe is now sitting. If you look back at the uh, first time I tested this pipe, there was a gap. It wasn't sitting so flush like that. It was a big gap, so I think maybe that they just didn't fit that right when they put it back together. And now that is solid. It's not moving whatsoever. It's locked in. Uh, there was a little bit of movement on it when I was moving it before. You could you could see the uh, metal insert sort of moving 
uh, around a little bit like that so i just think it wasn't inserted right now we're going to connect up the other end and uh we'll do another smoke test so what the last garage uh, who replaced the intercooler told her is that the dpf needs clean but obviously this is a uh, an older vehicle it's it doesn't actually have a dpf it's got a catalyst system down there but no dpf but nevertheless uh, i have seen those catalysts block up just just the same as the dpf does so we're connecting it back up here the machine is running no more smoke lease so we can see there that's still actually leaking so i just think the fitment there where it connects to the intercooler is just they get corroded and they just don't fit right So for this uh, VW here is, I think the best option for me to say here is to just let her bring it back to the, the, the person who's fitted this uh, intercooler. There's there's no point in me ripping all of this intercooler off. I, I think, you know, the where that pipe connects into the intercooler, the, the inside of it is sort of disformed and corroded a little bit. So it's, it's, not, it's not making a good seal. And the reason she called me out here was the person who fitted the intercooler has told her that uh he thinks it's a dpf issue the, uh, the van isn't fitted with a dpf it's fitted with a catalytic converter and that can that can get blocked but um this i don't think that's the problem because the problem she's getting is uh it doesn't happen all the time so unless she gets to say a big hill she puts her foot down tries to pick up some speed then the van will go into sort of a limp mode it'll lose power um so it's it's turbo over boost and under boost issues like so it's got a boost leak uh someone's already apparently repaired it so i think just send it back to her to whoever done that and uh get them to sort that out once that boost leak is fixed and she, if she's still having some more issues we can come back and maybe look a little bit further at the turbo and maybe remove and clean the catalytic converter and you know see if that improves her power but um there's pointless doing anything until we can get that um that leak fixed so we're not going to charge her to do that if she's already paid someone else to do it so i think that's it we're finished on this one see you next time